for African Americans, generally speaking, um, and and it's not even it's like more than generally speaking, um, wealth has not been able to be stored up. And even when it was stored up, it was at risk from being taken and pilfered by all kinds of things. Um, uh, so so because of that, you have a, a huge disparate uh, gap in the base of wealth between white Americans and African Americans. Um, uh, where in you know your average white American has a median net worth of a hundred thousand dollars in 2010, and you, your average African American family has a median net worth of five thousand dollars in 2010, um, and those are you know that it's just it's it's deep it's 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 deep, and to consider that is huge uh, for missional communities that are moving into these spaces, moving into those foreclosed homes and into those neighborhoods if they're not aware of the history, if they're not aware of how, uh, um, or if they don't become aware of how the different industries, how the, the poverty happened in those neighborhoods, then they might assume um, the, the, the um, solutions to the issues or problems of poverty are one thing when they're not, they actually are this over here. Or they might assume, uh, make assumptions uh, that, that the solutions are personal these people just really need a higher, a harder work ethic. These people just need to learn how to deal with their money better. These people just need um, um, stronger family units to be able to, you know, they need fathers in the home. These are real assumptions that I've had people actually say to me. There's an amazing story that broke a couple of weeks ago um, in, I think it was Kansas City, Missouri, about a woman who experienced exactly that. She was a professional. She was. She owned her own home. She had a two-parent home. She had her own job, and um, uh, I can't remember her name right now. But she lost her job as a result of losing her job. She wasn't able to keep going on the payments on her home. She lost her home um, because of the ballooned payments from the subprime loan that she received. African American woman, and um, because she lost her home and her job, she lost her kids. She had to move in with her parents who were older. She began to have a nervous breakdown. She was, she was dependent on medication. Um, she sprained her ankle on the street. She became homeless. Um, she went to two separate hospitals, or maybe three separate hospitals, asking for help for her sprained ankle. Um, she was helped at one point, but came back because it, it still didn't feel right. And uh, in the last hospital, had her arrested, yes, arrested um, for, for uh, trespassing, because they said, you're fine turned out that she had blood clots in her leg that had that had built up but the hospital apparently just didn't detect it in the emergency room you know they're not gonna they don't take a whole lot of time with patients and she didn't have any insurance so there you go and so they took her to jail and within minutes of them closing the jail cell she died so this just happened this just recently happened and I think that in that story, it's interesting. You actually see, you see kind of a system that, that people get caught up in, and you see housing, you see the, the kind of the confluence or, or intersection of the housing system, the prison system, the healthcare system, and how one family was broken up by the brokenness of our systems. So as we move into these parishes and we say, this is our parish, it's not enough that we only love the people. We actually have to love the people by addressing the systems that are, are helping to break people. And, and really, what I, what I actually call people to is, is, is ultimately to say, hey, what our deal is, is we want, to, we want to transform systems. And that means we need to actually speak to governance. We need to speak to the government and policies um, and our budgets, which are moral documents, and tell us you know, what our priorities are, who our priorities are. And we need to do that in a way that calls government, government, government and businesses to bless people, not curse them. This woman in Kansas City was cursed by all of those systems. Um, and she's only one story of millions of people who have been caught up in systems like that. And if this is our parish, that means that she is one that we're called to love. And it's not enough for us. Our love, it should not have limits. And that means it needs to stretch into the systems that people are, are caught up in as well.